a menu, jumping, enemies, fighting, a health system, a money system and more. My game is starting to take shape. In this episode I will show you all the game mechanics and development progress that I have implemented so far, starting from the beginning and going through each implementation step by step. Hello and welcome, my name is Ilya and I am working on a 2D metroidvania game called Onchu. Let's dive right in. Let's start with the menu scene. Currently I have added placeholder graphics which will undergo many visual changes in the future. Also the option button is not functional yet. After starting the game we get the most complicated part in my game for now. The save and load system. I tried simpler save and load systems but they didn't work the way I wanted or did not work at all. Therefore I looked for a more complex system that I'm also not understanding 100% at my current programming knowledge but enough to feel safe using it. I will link the tutorial I followed in the description but please keep in mind that I made a few changes based on my own preferences. When starting the game you are presented with two options continue game or start a new game. If you don't have a saved game your only option is to select new game. Here you can either delete your saved games or select an empty slot to start a new game. In continue game you can only choose an existing game to continue from. What you can see on the save files is a game completion percentage. For now I just connected it to the money collection. Because you can collect more than 100 your percentage can also go over it as well. Currently the save system only saves the money you collected and the last checkpoint. Although there are many different things that need to be saved I cannot guarantee that this save system will work for everything I intended to or whether I have to upgrade it further later on. Now we are inside the first scene and before we continue with the next topic I have implemented the in-game menu as well. If you press the escape button the game pauses and if you click continue the game unpauses. Additionally the exit button brings you out of the game and back into the main menu. Back into the game brings us to the next part, the player basics. While I will give you a full rundown of all my current scripts in a future video, I will keep this one simple. As you can see I have implemented the player movement and jumping. The jump is a Mario style jump with a variable jump height, depending on how long you press the jump button. I have also implemented the double jump, but it should not be needed in the first part of the game. The last player ability is a basic melee attack in front of you. The image is a placeholder for now. The input system I used for all this is the new Unity input system. While I had many headaches implementing it and getting it to work exactly as I wanted, I strongly believe it will make my life a lot easier in the future. For those who don't know what the new Unity input system does, here's a quick rundown. The new Unity input system package is a newer, more flexible system that allows you to use any kind of input device to control your Unity content. While I see the main benefit in the possibility of adding controllers and other devices very easily without changing your scripts, the new input system also has many other features that are great. One of those features are the action maps, which make it easier to switch between different input needs like menu, inventory and fighting. There are many great tutorials for this on YouTube if you want to implement it into your game. Next up is the UI. I have added a basic UI that displays your health points shown with those three symbols at the top and two energy systems that load up as you hit enemies. The first one will keep the energy until used while the second one loses the energy after some time of inactivity. Those energy systems allow you to perform special attacks or abilities later on but for now they don't have any use yet. There is also a placeholder for a money counter but it has no graphics yet. You will see all those UI elements in action with the next topic. The enemies. I have added two enemy types so far. Both are of the crab type matching the beach setting. The first one is hidden as a rock and runs away from you when it sees you. The second one attacks you when you are in its line of sight and it has a special attack when it's close to you. After hitting it, it loses an eye. When you hit it three times, it will emerge and charge you without its special attack. Monsters can make you lose health with body hits or their attacks. 
After dying, they drop those placeholder coins for now. Those enemies are not the only thing that can damage you. I have also implemented traps. Traps, in this case spikes, make you lose health and respawn you next to the trap. For that I have added respawn points next to the traps that save your position temporary and respawn you when you are getting hit by a trap. Since there are no other save points in the game for now, they also save the position if you exit and continue the game. Ah, and I also created a chest that breaks after you hit it a few times and drops coins. At the moment the chests respawn every time you load back into the game. This is definitely something I have to change and make them one time only. This is something I have to look into for so many things anyways, because I don't also want bosses, quest items and broken walls to respawn. But I'll tackle this another time. Next I want to discuss the parallax effect in my scenes. As you can see I created this effect by placing sprites on different depths. One issue I faced was having to scale the sprites in the back as they appear smaller when I moved them further away. Another problem was the parallax effect being too strong when moving vertically. Although I attempted to resolve this with a script that moved the background at different speeds, it would only work in a linear game, not when entering a map from different starting points. As a result I have to live with those minor issues and maintain the current way it is. Moving on to the last significant feature that I have yet to showcase, the sound. I have added sound effects and background music to my game. Although this background music is my first attempt on creating any music ever, I am still pleased with how it turned out. However, I have not yet decided whether I will use this music in the actual game, create all the music myself at all, or seek help for it. The same applies for sound effects. The footsteps on sand are the only sound effect I created on my own for now. All other sound effects are free assets from the asset store and may be replaced. As you can hear I also made it so you can hear different footsteps depending on the surface you are stepping on. And here the music gets a bit dampened when you get hit to bring out the damage a bit more. That concludes this Entre Dev vlog. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the implemented features so far. If you have any feedback or ideas, please feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates on the game. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!